Rock mining is a great way to triple your mining income and turn mining into an actual ISK printer. But it can also be an easy way to lose 8 billion ISK or more if things do go wrong. So in today's video, I will show you in depth how to use your Rockle, the setup you want to go with, and how to make sure that your Rockle will survive so you too can activate the ISK printer to make billions per hour. But playing alone in EVE sucks. So if you want to take part in an awesome community, fly fun ships, make some dank ISK and have genuinely a good time with constantly people around you to hang out with. So come and join Suspect today and fight under the banner of our great supreme leader, me. So come and join our Discord today. Anyway, on with the video. Hey guys, it's me, I for one. I already said before that the Rockle is the hardest ship to fly in a previous video of mine, and it still is, my opinion didn't change on that. But if you know what you do, it can easily be the tankiest and most survival ship in all of EVE, but it requires you to know what you are doing and be in a group that is not PvP averse. Because even Tuhar and Kikimoros are effectively just slightly stronger attack 1 destroyers and most deaths that do happen are self-inflicted. Clicking the wrong button or no button at all is the biggest risk here. And I put a lot of effort into this video to make sure you can be the best Rockle pilot ever, so please take the time and watch it fully, it's not even that long. So let's start with the sub uh, setup. What do you need to make a Rockle worthwhile? Rockles used to be the biggest miners in the game. And in some regard they still are, but Hulks with Rockle boost will each mine as much as the Rockle itself. Since the Rockle is expensive, you will need yourself a small mining fleet, but already just two Hulks can easily be worth it. And if you add more on top of that, that is just more risk for you. It is very good risk too. Even just ice mining, you can expect anywhere from 80 million per hour to 120 million per hour per hulk, and the Rockle is mining twice as much as the hulks. With just 3 counts, that is at worst 360 million power. It is not amazing, but ice is your most consistent and among worst income source. If you have however access to moons, low side rocket or anything else, this number can skyrocket by a lot, all the way to a low average of 251 million power per hulk, and for your Rockle too, allowing you to make with 3 accounts 1.5 billion per hour. That is actually a lot of risk. But for how to fit the barges and do basic fleet mining, go check out the video linked in the top right right now that I made a while ago. But actually more important than all of that, you will also need on top of that a Sino ult. A Sino ult sitting in a false recon in the same system as you. If you do get catched, this will be essential. Either have the false recon in station with the station having been set to home station, so you can worst case respawn there, or have it cloaked more than 200 kilometers away from your Oracle. Frankly, in this case, just ask your alliance how they want you to do it. But make sure you have a force recon on standby, as the first step in getting saved is getting your help to get there in time. As the force recon allows anyone to either jump there with a capital or get bridged to by a titan bridge, so that is very essential for you. Fitting a force recon however is very easy, you just need a covered ops cloak, a sino and max tank. That is all you need, also always have enough liquid ozone with you, as you need liquid ozone to actually open the sino. But those are just the ships around your Rockle. Now we come to the topic of the big boy itself, the Rockle itself. I will explain every module you have, so you can understand its use and hopefully properly utilize your Rockle to its fullest extent. Oh dear, this will take a while, I just signed up to a lot. And of course, as always, you'll find the fitting in the video description, so go ahead, copy it and make sure you use that one. Not whatever abominations end up on that killboard, they end up there for a reason because they die. So let's go over that fitting. The industrial core is to the Rockle what the Siege mode is to a Dreadnought. Once you hit that button, you mine a lot more, your boosts have incredible range and you are a lot stronger. But it also increases your active tank, your drone HP and damage. Technically this makes your Rockle super strong in regards to PvP too, just giving an idea here. To run it, you will need heavy water, which you can carry in your fuel bay. It requires however a lot of heavy water, so make sure you have a local stockpile just lying about either in your mining spot or anywhere close by. However, once you do hit that button, you're immobile for 5 minutes and can't leave. At the same time, if you're tackled, you will need to siege mode to actually survive, as it increases survivability by a lot. The compressor module is CCP's failed attempt at making all ships be able to compress and essentially make the Rockle an overglorified orca, as before only the Rockle could compress ore. Its boosts are insane however, but the compressor takes up fitting space that before you didn't have to waste for it. Each ore type has its own compressor. There's one for gas, ice, normal ore and moon ore. The compressor can also only be used when you're sieged, but allows any ship in range of it to compress it in their own cargo hold. 
You also have a heavy energy neutralizer and a smart bomb to help you deal with tackle. The smart bomb can, if in range, smart bomb bubbles, while the neutralizer allows you to mute out interceptors, making it easier to kill them. The mining command bursts are self-explanatory. However, the shield command bursts are essential for your survival. You want to use harmonizing charges as active shield charges have no effect on your Oracle. This will increase your already silly tank even more. The ancillary shield booster and two capital cap boosters help you deal with void bombs from stealth bombers, which utilize your capacitor. If that happens, don't panic, literally, not only in regard to the item. I will explain when to do what later. We also have two PIV-C hardeners, because we need some resistances if we want to active tank in an active tank ship. The last active module we have is a Concord Capital Shield Booster. This is the shield booster you want to use as much as you can. Make sure to only use the Ancillary Shield Booster if you have to, as you will need to reload cap boosters into it if you don't want to use your, if you don't want your capacitor to die entirely. The panic button is often misunderstood. It makes you temporarily invulnerable to damage. However, clicking it too early can kill you, but clicking it too late can kill you as well. Clicking it at exactly the right moment is highly important as this will give your allies the most possible time to actually save you. To use it, your needs, however, are rock locked. So make sure that when you get tackled, always have also rock pre-locked. But even more importantly, make sure to level up your invulnerability cooperation skill, as each skill level increases the time it lasts by 10%, starting at 4 minutes and topping out at 6 minutes. You also want a full drone hangar with one set of excavators only. The fitting link below has a basically full hangar of drones, just make sure to use your combo drones. The Rorkel gets a massive drone damage and HP bonus, making it a very valid combat ship too. Don't forget that. In your cargo hold, you want to fit as many 3000 to 100 cap boosters as you can. The more the better, as it increases the amount of time you can tank. You also want a blue pill, shield boost, mining boost, and potentially some mining crystals for your barges, as well as a mobile depot to refit at. Alright, we got the fitting done, but before we can go mining, we have to do some preparations, and the first preparation is getting our mining fleet in position. For that, you can just put your mining barges in your ship maintenance bay fitted. A total of 6 barges will fit inside. You can also use your Rorkel to conduit jump any mining barge within 2500 meters of your Rorkel. However, for this you will need to fit an industrial bridge. This will take up a lot of fitting space and also additional skills. So make sure that once you jumped your Rorkel to your destination sino, you also refit it again to its normal fit. To jump to a Sino, you need to be the fleet with your Force Recon, light the Sino, and either right-click your capacitor and hit Jump 2 and select your own Sino, or hit Conduit Jump and jump to that Sino. Once you arrive at your destination already beforehand, scan for wormholes. If there's other traffic where you want to mine, maybe don't, maybe there's wormholes, or clear up the traffic first with your friends. Make sure you're on voice with them as well. But when it comes to the mining itself, I guess you already have a basic idea how to mine, considering you're flying a Rorkel. Use bookmarks to get as close to the rocks as you can. This reduces your excavator's flight time. They are incredibly slow traveling, and that will cut the most into your Rorkel's ISK income. The more important part in a regard to this kind of ship is, how do you use it for combat and how do you behave when you're tackled? First, make sure you're always on voice chat with your friends. Best case, already before you even get tackled, just in general. If you do get tackled, warp your barges off. They will be the most vulnerable. If you're not able to warp your barges off, don't panic. Just right-click your rockle with your barges and click and just deposit them into your rockle's ship maintenance bay. Just make sure that you also unload the orbs so you can actually drop them in there. Make sure to also contact someone to actually come and save you. Most groups are not able to kill a rockle. But if the attackers are able to, you want to have help arrive as fast as possible. If you do get tackled by bombers, Make sure to not hit the panic button immediately. Use your shield boosters and hold as long as you can. Only panic once you get into hull. And use panic to just heal, up, heal back up immediately. Same goes for Kikimoros, especially since they shoot into your strongest resist. Just make sure to use blue pill to use your cap boosters and hold as long as you can. Also make a D-scan and send it to your allies, so you know what you're tackled by. You can also use this to make a rough headcount of how much DPS they are dealing. A Kikimura will fully spooled up deal around 800 DPS, while a Stealth Bomber will do between 400 and 800 DPS, depending on heating skills and how much DPS they have fitted. I linked a website where you can actually make a link to a D-scan in the video description, so check that out as well. However, if you do get dropped by Super Carousel Dreadnoughts, panic! Panic as soon as they lock you up, 
Super carriers can and will one-shot your Oracle, especially with us two or more. Don't wait until they are in range or hit you for the first time. Make your OC also aware that it is two supers or more. Don't wait, tell it if they lose two super carriers, that, that is a lot more worth than your Oracle, and you will also be a hero. But if you do follow all those tips, your Oracle should and will stay alive for a long time. So go ahead, grab your Oracle, go mining, have fun, make money, who knows, maybe your Oracle will even get some kill marks over time as you accumulate kill kills with it using its strong drones. And this, however, is all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, do not be afraid to ask in the comments. Go ahead and do so. Ask me on Discord, join my Discord, join my co-op if you want to mine with me. Leave a like on the video and subscribe and I hope to see you guys next time.